In China, love weaves through the colorful fabric of life, like a dance where societal expectations twirl like graceful matchmakers orchestrate, family markets hawk, and the clock ticks on, branding the unwed leftover. But beneath the glittering facade, a different story whispers. In this tangled web of modern pressures, we must untangle the past's knots. For only then can love truly find its own rhythm, free from the drumbeat of societal obligation. Today we will talk about the leftover women of ancient China. As we delve deeper into the history of ancient China, we discover a rich tapestry that is weaved with stringent social mores that restrict what happens between the sexes. During the spring and autumn seasons, an unusual event known as the Mid-Spring Meeting took place, as referred to by the locals. According to the customs of the Zhou Dynasty, this ceremony occurred every year in the second month of spring. Despite its appearance of being a romantic gathering, it had a coercive aspect, as it was organized by local governments. Individuals who chose not to participate were subject to legal penalties, as stated in the following declaration. Anyone who does not take part in the meeting for no reason will be punished. Criminal Charges for Unmarried Offspring in the Southern Kingdom of Yue In the course of subsequent exploration of the Southern Kingdom of Yue, a more authoritarian strategy was implemented. Criminal charges may be brought against the parents of unmarried adults, specifically spinsters who are older than 17 years old or bachelors who are older than 20 years old. This severe enforcement highlighted the importance that is given to societal expectations regarding marriages that take place at the appropriate time, depicting a society that is willing to deploy legal measures to guarantee that established norms are adhered to, the imposition of taxes during the Han Dynasty. A fresh facet of the dynamics of marriage was established during the Han Dynasty, and that was the practice of taxes based on marital status. Women under the age of 30 who were not married were subject to a tax burden that was five times higher than that of their married counterparts. This taxing method showed a complex knowledge within the ancient Chinese government that parental guilt and financial incentives played crucial roles in guiding individuals into the institution of marriage. This understanding was mirrored in the taxation strategy, taxation based on marital status during the Han Dynasty. A change in the way that matchmaking was conducted occurred during the Western Jin Dynasty, which was ruled by Emperor Wu. This change occurred as time advanced. Direct action was chosen by the government as an alternative to the use of mixers and other punitive measures. It should be noted, however, that this intervention was not devoid of any gender biases. According to the history of the Jin Dynasty, Emperor Wu issued an edict in the year 273, which stated that if parents did not find a husband for their daughter beyond the age of 17, the local government would arrange a man for her. There was a lack of exploration into the mechanisms involved in picking an acceptable match, which has allowed opportunity for speculation regarding the complexities of this government-led selection process. In the later years of the Northern and Southern dynasties, there was a likelihood of imprisonment. During the transition from the earlier Northern dynasty to the later Southern dynasty, there was a change in the strategy that the government took, the fact that scheduling matches required a lot of effort appeared to lose favor, and a regulation that was fairly concerning came into existence. The statement that if a woman did not get married after the age of 15, her entire family would be sent to prison was documented in the history of the Song Kingdom. With this extreme approach, it was inferred that the risk of being imprisoned was greater than the amount of effort that would be required for traditional matchmaking. There was an increase in the use of coercive measures, which served to highlight the severity with which societal norms were imposed during this time period. Differences between traditional methods and contemporary obstacles. At the same time that we are contemplating these historical practices, it becomes abundantly clear that the present issues that young people in China are confronted with, particularly in the area of marriage, are quite distinct from one another. There is still a lot of pressure on people to get married, but the ways in which society and the state go about doing so have changed. The use of legal repercussions and taxation as instruments of coercion has been common in ancient times. There are a variety of ways in which cultural expectations present themselves in the modern period. Some of these methods include parental pressure, scrutiny from the media, and the widespread notion of being referred to as a leftover woman. Millennials in modern China At the present time, China is experiencing the phenomena of leftover women which is a word that is used to refer to women who are not married and are in their late 20s or older. As a result of nagging relatives, a constant assault of media that questions one's self-worth, and the ongoing cycle of blind dates and condescending counsel from married acquaintances, the pressure to conform to the standards of society is tangible. The absence of the legal and financial compulsion that was characteristic of ancient China is, however, 
a significant difference that becomes apparent via this analysis. The contemporary Chinese landscape includes marriage markets, which are places where parents actively participate in the process of matching their children with future spouses. Despite the fact that this may be a reflection of activities that have occurred in the past, the absence of legal ramifications provides the individuals engaged with a sense of autonomy. It is possible for parents to provide public displays of their children's profiles at locations such as Tiantan Park in Beijing. However, the children themselves have the freedom to determine the extent to which they are involved. Cultural Shifts The evolution of society's ideas on marriage over the course of several centuries is an interesting phenomenon to observe. When compared to the severe societal expectations that existed in ancient China, the current emphasis on human autonomy and personal choice reflects a departure from such expectations. There has been a movement in the narrative away from weddings that are required by the state and towards a more sophisticated understanding of the complexity that encompasses human relationships, understanding the relationship between autonomy and tradition. As one travels across the historical terrain of Chinese marriage dynamics, one gradually becomes aware of the intricate relationship that exists between tradition and society control. Ancient customs, which were characterized by legal pressure, taxes, and intervention by the government, were responsible for shaping the institution of marriage. Despite the fact that they are struggling to meet the demands of society, today's kids might benefit from a more nuanced and independent approach to relationships. However, the techniques of enforcement have developed over time. A cultural shift has occurred as a result of the transition from government-organized mixers and punitive measures to the modern engagement of parents and the scrutiny of society. Despite the fact that societal expectations continue to impose pressure, the absence of legal repercussions demonstrates a society that is more sensitive to the autonomy of individuals and the choices they make for themselves. As we contemplate the historical fabric of Chinese marriage, it is of the utmost importance to recognize the strides that have been made in the development of a society that places a high emphasis on the autonomy of individuals. However, the ability to choose choices without fear of jail represents a substantial shift from the coercive tactics that were prevalent in the past. The hardships that today's young, who are labeled as leftovers in their late 20s, may be similar to the challenges that were encountered in the past. In the grand narrative of Chinese history, the evolution of marriage dynamics serves as a testament to the adaptation of cultural standards. This is because marriage dynamics have evolved over time. The shifting shapes of contemporary relationships point to a society that acknowledges the significance of individual happiness and fulfillment, despite the fact that tradition may cast a long shadow. In order to successfully manage the intricate relationship between autonomy and tradition, it is vital that we continue to investigate and challenge the expectations that society has for us. The durability of cultural traditions is demonstrated by the historical progression from matchmaking that was regulated by the government to the engagement of parents in marriage markets in many modern societies. On the other hand, it highlights the significance of modifying these behaviors so that they are in accordance with the principles of personal liberty and personal choice. So guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. For more interesting content, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day and I will see you in the next video.